Imagine if you could harness the massive energy of a spinning black hole, a cosmic engine capable of warping space-time and swallowing light. Now imagine using mirrors to bounce that energy around until it grows so intense, it explodes. In a stunning real-world twist, physicists have successfully recreated this theoretical black hole bomb in the lab. Not with an actual black hole, but with something much more down to Earth a rotating metal cylinder. This marks the first laboratory demonstration of a phenomenon called super radiance. And in this video, we will learn the what, the how, and the incredible implications of this breakthrough. Physicists have long theorized that energy could be extracted from a spinning black hole. This idea dates back to the 1960s, when Roger Penrose proposed that objects entering the ergosphere, the region outside a rotating black hole's event horizon, could extract energy by splitting into two particles. One would carry negative energy into the black hole, and the other would escape with more energy than the original object. This process would slightly slow the black hole's spin, but the escaping particle would come out supercharged. Penrose's work inspired further questions. Could entire waves, not just particles, be amplified this way? That's where super radiance comes in. In 1971, Yakov Zeldovich proposed that this kind of energy amplification could occur not only in black holes, but in any spinning, absorbing object, such as a simple metal cylinder, if it rotates fast enough. He theorized that incoming electromagnetic waves could be amplified when interacting with such a rotating object extracting rotational energy in the process. But Zeldovich didn't stop there. He went on to suggest that even the quantum vacuum itself could undergo super radiance. According to quantum field theory, empty space isn't really empty. It teems with virtual particles that flicker into and out of existence in a phenomenon called vacuum fluctuation. Zeldovich argued that a rotating object could amplify these fluctuations. Stephen Hawking initially rejected the idea, but ultimately, his own work on Hawking radiation proved Zeldovich right. Black holes, even non-rotating ones, can emit radiation thanks to these quantum effects. Despite the elegance of the math, no one could find a way to test superradiance in real black holes. The energies and conditions involved are too extreme. But theorists including William Press and Saul Tucholsky proposed a creative workaround. Surround a spinning black hole with a perfectly reflective mirror. The waves would bounce back, interact with the ergosphere repeatedly, and grow exponentially until the system exploded with energy. Thus, the concept of the black hole bomb was born. This remained a thought experiment until now. What seemed like science fiction has now taken shape in a physics lab at the University of Southampton. Hendrik Ulbricht and his team created a working model of Zeldovich's black hole bomb using a simple but clever setup. A spinning aluminum cylinder, electromagnetic fields, and some electrical components. At the heart of the experiment is a motorized rotating cylinder surrounded by the stator coils from a commercial induction motor. These coils, combined with capacitors and resistors, form a system capable of both generating and reflecting electromagnetic waves. Essentially, building the mirror line shell required for a bomb-like feedback loop. Initially, the team faced setbacks. The system was prone to literal explosions, not of nuclear scale, but enough to destroy their experimental circuits. When too much current flowed through the coils, resistors would fry, breaking the feedback loop. But eventually, they hit a sweet spot. The electromagnetic signal began to grow exponentially, confirming the presence of super radiance. The cylinder's rotational energy was being transferred to the amplified waves, just as Zeldovich had predicted. Even more astonishing, the team found that electromagnetic waves could be generated spontaneously from nothing more than background thermal noise. This mirrors Zeldovich's quantum vacuum predictions. By rotating the cylinder at just the right speed, 
they amplified these tiny fluctuations without any initial electromagnetic input. It was, in effect, the first lab demonstration of vacuum-induced superradiance. And what about the explosion? The feedback loop worked so well that it pushed the system into a state of instability. Though it didn't release devastating energy, it maxed out at about a millijoule, roughly equivalent to pressing a key on a mechanical keyboard. It proved the theoretical model correct. Ulbricht and colleagues didn't just simulate the black hole bomb, they built it. This lab-built black hole bomb may not pose a threat to civilization, but it opens a door to revolutionary science. First, it allows physicists to explore the mechanics of black holes without needing to go near one. As Vitor Cardoso of the Niels Bohr Institute explained, the experiment provides a solid basis for studying the entire physics of black holes. One area of intense interest is dark matter. Some theories suggest that ultralight particles like axions hypothetical candidates for dark matter, could interact with black holes through superradiance. If these particles accumulate around a spinning black hole, they could drain its rotational energy and create detectable wave signatures. With laboratory experiments like Ulbricht's, scientists can now mimic and probe these effects without needing astrophysical black holes. The implications don't stop at dark matter. If electromagnetic energy can be extracted from background fluctuations in a lab, could this lead to new forms of energy generation? Ulbricht himself speculates that in a few decades, we might learn to harvest energy from the vacuum, a limitless source that could redefine our relationship with energy. While that vision remains speculative, it's rooted in real experimental progress. The simplicity of the experiment is just as remarkable. Using off-the-shelf components and creative thinking, this team did what many assumed would require billion-dollar particle accelerators or space-based observatories. They brought cosmic-scale physics into the lab. That sets a powerful precedent. Sometimes, paradigm-shifting science doesn't need to be big. It just needs to be clever. What's next? Ulbricht and his team are already planning the quantum version of the experiment hoping to isolate and amplify genuine vacuum fluctuations without interference from thermal noise. Achieving this would mark a profound leap in experimental quantum field theory and could help physicists understand how quantum mechanics and general relativity coexist. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration into the cutting edge of physics, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And stay curious, because sometimes the universe's biggest secrets start with the simplest experiments.